Once a new private cloud is created, a VPN connection is required to reach the secured management network resources. I'm Darren Schmitz with VMware, and in this video, I'm going to show configuring a point-to-site VPN to connect to Google Cloud VMware Engine. Since the private cloud management network is a protected network, a secure connection is necessary to remotely gain access to vCenter, NSX, HCX, or any other infrastructure components. One of the easiest ways to establish this connectivity is by deploying one of the point-to-site VPN solutions available through the Google Marketplace. While there are multiple third-party VPN gateways available, this video will be focused on deploying the OpenVPN Access Server. Before beginning, keep in mind that an important prerequisite is to have the private service access and VPC peering completed and working. A common use case for this point-to-site VPN is to facilitate access to the vSphere infrastructure components for a single-node proof-of-concept deployment or workload testing. However, it can also be used as an emergency access point to the environment, or even for temporary access while the permanent connectivity is being implemented. It is also worth noting that another solution such as Cloud Interconnect or Google Cloud VPN should be used when connecting your private cloud to on-premises. In other words, this VPN is best suited for ad hoc connections and not as a primary access method. Getting started from the Google Cloud dashboard, we first navigate to the Google Marketplace. A quick search will reveal a list of all the third-party solutions available, where I can select the OpenVPN access server towards the bottom. From here, clicking Launch begins the deployment. This screen asks for machine specifics such as name, zone, machine type, and other options, most of which can be left at default. However, for optimal performance, it is recommended to pick the zone matching your existing VMware Engine private cloud. Scrolling down reveals the four firewall ports the appliance needs opened for management and traffic flow. The firewall rule creation section also allows source IP address ranges to be added if needed. This can be helpful for limiting access to the admin login page, which listens on TCP 943. To start the appliance deployment, accept the terms of service, then click Deploy. The deployment manager will automatically deploy the instance, create the firewall rules, and in a few moments, the OpenVPN access server will be available for initial configuration. The top right hand section of the screen contains all the pertinent information required to continue. One of the first recommended steps is to change the temporary admin password. Clicking on the SSH button will open a secured connection to the appliance console, transfer the SSH keys, and open to the machine's shell prompt. From here, admins can use standard Linux commands to change the password for the OpenVPN account. For this account, it's highly recommended to choose a very secure password since the network interfaces will be exposed to the internet. The next recommended step is to assign a static IP to the VM instance. This is done by navigating to the VPC Network IP Address Configuration panel, then clicking into the External IP Addresses section. As shown, the IP address for this VM instance is currently ephemeral, but it can be converted to a static IP by clicking on Reserve. Just assign the static IP a name, then click Reserve. With the temporary password reset and a static IP reserved, the OpenVPN Access Server appliance settings can be configured next. To access the administrative settings for the appliance, it must be done through a special admin URL. This URL can quickly be found from the Deployment Manager screen. As mentioned previously, for security reasons, the admin login page URL uses TCP port 943 for access. This allows for separation of the admin access page from the user access page that listens on port 443. When logging into the Access Server admin page for the first time, the EULA must be agreed to continue. Once logged in, the first screen is the Activation Manager screen. By default, the OpenVPN license agreement allows for two concurrent VPN connections at no cost. However, if more than two concurrent connections are needed, an additional license key is required. Moving on to the VPN settings. The Dynamic IP Address Network field specifies the IP address pool that will be assigned to the VPN clients when they connect. 
For this field, it is recommended to specify an unused subnet to prevent any conflicts. This is especially important if routing will eventually be used instead of the default NAT configuration. In addition, the list of subnets that the VPN clients can access must be specified in this field. The subnets page within the private cloud portal provides a good reference when creating this list. The last step is to specify the DNS servers. Entering the private cloud's DNS servers will enable the clients to resolve the internal FQDNs assigned to all the management network resources. When complete, save the settings and update the running server to activate them. Next, let's create the first user account. After specifying a new username, the account can be given admin rights and allowed to auto-log in. Checking the Auto Login box enables the use of certificate-based authentication instead of requiring a password. To set the account password, click on the pencil for more settings. When done, click to save and once again update the running server. With the VPN gateway configured, the next step is to configure the VPN client machine. To begin, let's switch back to the Deployment Manager tab. Clicking on the site address will launch a new tab to the user login page, where I can use the account just created. The user landing page allows downloading the clients and connection profiles, launching the admin panel, or changing their password. Clicking on the recommended client begins the download. In a few moments, the download can be opened to start the installer. Following through the wizard, all that is needed is to accept the EULA, click install, then finish. Once completed, the OpenVPN Connect client opens automatically. After agreeing to the terms and reviewing the latest updates, clicking the toggle will connect the client machine into the network. One of the benefits of downloading the OpenVPN Connect client from the user portal is that the connection profile, including the auto login certificates, is automatically bundled into the client installer. Now let's switch browser tabs back to the private cloud settings page. With the client machine securely connected to the management network, clicking on any of the private FQDNs will now launch a new page to access that resource. For example, clicking on the NSX link allows admins to log into the NSX manager to configure new network segments, firewalls, or DHCP. Similarly, Clicking on the VCSA link will allow admins to access the vSphere client to start managing the environment. For more information about Google Cloud VMware Engine, check out VMware Cloud Tech Zone.